All right, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, bye week was productive and uh, good mix of getting our developmental guys uh, some much needed work and, and keeping the guys that have been playing in the games in shape and, and also taking some time to rest and recover, which I think is important. Um, we, we uh, in a scrimmage situation, we let our development, developmental guys go three days last week. Players of the week, so you can have their names. I want you all to know who did well. Uh, the standouts, quarterback Jarrett Daigie. Um, threw the ball really well. Guy I'm excited about uh, as we move forward with him. Uh, wide receiver I Isaiah Esdale, his playing time increased versus Kansas. I think you'll continue to see that. He had a really good bye week as well. On uh, defense, bandit Jared Bartlett, um, guy that we're excited about as he continues to gain weight and grow. Uh, showed some really good rush off the edge uh, last week. D tackle Jalen Thornton, a guy that's playing in the interior. Uh, he was disruptive, made a bunch of plays. And then at safety, Tyke Smith, we got him a lot of reps. He's played. He will continue to play. Uh, but we got him a lot of reps last week, and I thought it was big for him. Uh, turning our attention to Texas, a very impress impressive team, 11th ranked team in the country, as you all know. Um, Coach Herman in his third year there. Um, and they've done a really good job recruiting. They're long. That's the thing that sticks out to you is, is their length. They, they've got really good team speed. Kind of recap. Um, you know, each each individual unit. Uh, one of the top special teams in the country. I think they're in the top ten in special teams efficiency. Um, their punter's off to a great start. Um, he was I think he was number one punter in the country in 2018 coming out, and he's been very good. And the kicker's been extremely consistent uh, over the last two years, um, mainly touchbacks on kickoff, and he's been really solid on field goals. And their kickoff re returner is their, is their leading receiver. Uh, they've returned one kickoff for a touchdown, and they're a threat in that game. Offensively, uh, one of the best offenses in the country. Uh, they've got big numbers, total offense. They're, they're right up there. Scoring offense, they're right up there, well over 40 points a game. Uh, starts with, with Ellinger, their, the, the quarterback. He, he's a Heisman Trophy. I talked about him yesterday on the conference call. I think he's special. He's a tough kid. I think he's improved his passing ability. Uh, he's been extremely accurate this far. Uh, he's a tough tackle. They use him. Uh, he's a dual threat guy. They use him in the run game as well. And uh, he's really tough to get down. And I think his personality is what that team – has really taken is he's a tough he's a tough guy he's a winner um, obviously you can tell by watching him he he loves everything that that Texas represents they're extremely talented at wide receiver uh, uh, Duvernay du, I, I'm, I'll butcher that name but number six he's a player all right he got 39 receptions through four games I mean that's difficult to do um, I think he's right at the top in the country uh, at that uh, Colin Johnson it sounds like he may be back this week he's a big play threat he's been solid over his previous two years there um, you know well over six five uh, has an opportunity to you know, goes and post deep balls he's won a lot of one-on-ones and he's a really good player and I think their their offensive line is playing at a high level uh, Herb Hand does a nice job with the, with the offensive line I think those guys are playing at a high level uh, defensively very multiple uh, base out of a three down front uh, really heavy you know all of them 290 or better on the on the defensive line um, really secondary wise give you a ton of different looks um, try to confuse the quarterback um, they play a lot, a uh, lot of different guys. I know they've, they've had some injuries there, but they've got a lot of depth. And, and I can't tell a whole lot of difference between uh, when they put their ones in, or their difference between their ones and their twos. I think they're really talented. Um, a lot of team speed, especially a linebacker and in the secondary. And um, they play a bunch of guys. They stay fresh. Uh, they've played some really good offensive football teams, uh, LSU and, and Oklahoma State, and I think they've done a really nice job. Um, so – Wrapping up, I think it's a big game. Obviously, it's a 3.30 nationally televised game. Um, it's going to be a great atmosphere. Stripe the stadium. I'm looking forward to see that. We're going to need our crowd. Uh, we're going to need our students. I hope, I hope they, they, they show up in big numbers and I hope they stay. We're going to need them. The atmosphere, the home field atmosphere uh, advantage uh, needs to be big. I think it, it, it's, it's important for us this week. Uh, also recognizing the, the 50th anniversary of the 1969 Peach Bowl team, 10-1 and one team. I think Coach Bowden's going to be here, so that, that's going to be a, a big deal. Looking forward to meeting some of those guys on Friday night in, in front of the game. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Neil, offensively, their scheme, unique from what you've seen this year, is the power quarterback run stuff so different that it makes them completely unique? Well, I think what they do is they've got they've got a good mix of the quarterback run game with they take shots. 
you know, that's something that, that they've done a really good job of, not only this year through four games, but last year as well, is they take shots down the field and they hit those shots. Um, so I think they're really good. I think they're the best offense we played. Um, schematically, are they doing a bunch of different things? Um, I don't know if they're, they're much different than some of the other, um, as far as the type of plays they run, than some of the other spread teams we've played. But I think from an efficiency standpoint and being able to threaten you sideline to sideline and in the deep is, is I think, they're unique. How do you um, plan for all of the unknowns with the injuries? Do you just go into it in terms of them? Do you just go into it and say, well, we're going to figure on them playing and plan that way? Or how do you go about that? Well, I think they're so talented on defense. And uh, I think Tom even made a comment of it yesterday. He felt confident in those guys, and, and understandably so. They've played a bunch of guys. Even when everybody was healthy, they played a bunch of guys. Um, I can't tell a whole bunch of difference um, between the units. Um, I know this. When we line up and play, there's going to be some really good guys in the secondary. Who it's going to be, I don't really know, but I know they're going to be good players. When you've got talented guys, mm -hmm. obviously, that are going to be playing – but maybe not experienced on their end. Do you get? Are you going to try to do more maybe RPO or deception stuff to see yeah. if you can test those guys? Well, it's inexperienced versus inexperienced. So it's uh, no. I, I think what we what we're going to do is same thing we've tried to do over the last few weeks is is try to put our guys in the best case our best possible scenario. Uh, try to put our guys, uh, especially our quarterback, in a situation where um, understanding what what's going to happen pre snap and then giving him some quick, concise reads. Um, our guys got to do a good job. At some point, they do a really good job mixing up coverage. At some point, they're going to they're gonna play man, and we've got to do a really good job of getting, getting those guys' hands off and winning those battles. I think any of these big-type games, okay, and they're all big at this point. We're in, we're in the Big 12 play. But it comes down to a bunch of individual one-on-one -on -one battles, and we've got to win our share to have, to have success in this game. When you see a team that uses multiple fronts, do you try to keep things simple for your guys – to, to handle that with all the different looks they give you? Yeah, we've been pretty simple as far as schematically what we're doing run game-wise. We try to present it a bunch of different ways. We'll try, we'll try to do that again this week. Um, but, yeah, they do a really good job. The, the, di the difference in them compared to some other teams we play is they bounce around fronts, um, and, and, they, and they run a bunch of D linemen in, and they're big. You know, they've got, they've got a size advantage across the board uh, versus us. It looks, it looks like college football and even the NFL today – you see them more and more of these kind of quarterbacks uh, that yeah. being strong and can run. Uh, you might have three of them in a row coming up. Uh, what, uh, what does that do to you, and, 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 and you, how do you handle that? Well, I think what it does is, um, and we played a couple so far this year. You know, um, Kelly Bryan is really good at that too. He's a dual threat guy, and there are there are a lot of them in college football, and they and they put you in a bind because they throw they throw the ball well enough that you got to cover everything, but they also uh, they have the ability to make a play when it breaks down, and that's probably the scariest thing. Um, is he does a great job if you go if you, if you do a quality job in the secondary and you cover your guys, you know he does a great job of of breaking containment and running and, and then when he scrambles he can also find the open guy so it, it's tough you know we've got several of them in our league and so we've got to do as good a job I don't think you go into the game you go into the game understanding you're not necessarily going to shut them down but you got to limit the explosive plays that's the biggest thing those explosive plays on your part you've talked a lot about needing that is it how do you manufacture that or is it just I think it goes down to the one-on-ones you know we've got to be able to win those we've got to be able to throw the ball um, down there, we've got to be able to make some people miss in the open field in the run game, and we've got to generate some explosive plays. I, you know, um, when you're playing this type of offense that's, that has the ability to put a lot of points on the board, you've got to go into an understanding that, hey, you're going to have to make some big plays. And that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to throw the ball 50 yards down the field. What it does is it means that you've got to be able to break tackles, all right, You've got to be able to get north and south when you're running after the catch. Um, and, and those are some things we've got to do to keep the chains moving. Is that something you keep trying to do until you get it, until it pops? Yeah, so that's something that we, that was a big point of emphasis during the bye week. Um, you know, I don't know if that's something that necessarily just happens overnight. I think it's something that gradually takes place. Um, but that's something really going back um, when we had an issue with it in Missouri, that's something that we've put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and we've gotten better – running after the catch. We've gotten better breaking tackles. We're not as good as we need to be, but we've made improvements on it. The receiver, Duvernay, that you mentioned, seems like he's really turned into one of their favorite targets, a guy they like to go to on third down. What have you seen yeah. out of him that's made him so well, successful? 
Duvernay, that's how you say it. And I, and I actually got that written down, and I didn't do a very good job following my notes. But, uh, but do, you know, here's what I think is he's a guy that's been in the program for a while. So when you watch him play, he's really heady. Okay, and they move him around a bunch of different spots. Um, I think he's got a real good feel for just football in general. You know, if we weren't playing this week, I like to watch him play. You know, because he does a really good job of kind of settling in zones. He understands when it's man. He runs away from man coverage. He catches the ball just like I was talking about our guys needing to. He catches and gets vertical, has ability to make a, make a guy miss. Um, and like I said, his, and they've done a great job getting him the ball too, uh, especially when they had some of the other guys out. They've really focused on him. And, I mean, you had 39 catches through four games with the yardage he's put up. I think that's, that's, that's great production. Do you prefer to have a big game like this uh, early in conference play or, or later, or does it not matter? I mean, I think at this point, I mean, you all have watched them. Uh, you've watched most of the teams in our league. I think, you know, week in and week out, we're going to have some big games, you know, against playing against quality opponents. You know, our month of, our month of October, you know, I haven't looked much ahead. Of, but our month of October – you know, we're going to play some really good football teams. It starts this week with, with Texas. I mean, they're talented, and I think that's what we're going to see as we continue through our league. Yeah, Neil, guys, um, I'm trying to think of when it was. Maybe last week you said that Austin had done a good job in the RPO game with getting guys out of the box. Mm -hmm. And just from a layman's perspective, he doesn't run it. He doesn't keep it. He's not like Ellinger for sure. Mm -hmm. But he's doing some stuff to manipulate that for you. What, he what is. exactly is he doing there? And, and, and I think the last two weeks, too, against NC State, he pulled a couple. And then against Kansas, he had a couple of really positive plays, pulling the pulling the ball, um, and he and he has done a good job in the RPO game, probably better against NC State than he did against Kansas. Um, but you got to you, it, you know, to prevent guys from loading the box, you got to be able to either run the ball at quarterback or you got to be able to to get the ball outside. You know, it's one of the two answers. And um, he's done a good job RPO wise. I think that. Uh, he's an effective runner. I think he's a better athlete than than probably what he gets credit for. Um, the run he had versus Kansas was really good. He made he kind of made a guy miss and got up the sideline there for a ten plus gain. I think he did it twice actually. Um, but that's what when you make throws in the in the RPO game, then they can't necessarily crowd the box on you. Does that make sense? They have to re represent or they have to they have to cover you and move more people. They have to play you know multiple safeties. You mentioned their size, and they've got mm -hmm. impressive size. Specifically, in middle linebacker, too, they got a 250-pound mm -hmm. kid there. How do you what, – what are some of the things you can do when you're dealing with teams that are bigger than you like that across the board? Yeah, well, I, I think that, first of all, you it's not something you talk about a whole lot with your guys. I mean, it is what it is. Um, they use the linebacker a lot to blitz. He's an effective blitzer. Um, but they are. They've got good size. I mean, like I said, they've recruited really well. You know, they – um, Texas high school football is, is some of the best in the country, and they've done a really good job of, of picking and choosing the guys that fit their schemes. They're long. I think not only are they are they heavy, but they're long. You know, and the length really causes you more issue than the than maybe the girth or whatever. Um, but I think what you do is you you have a plan, and and really what you want to do is you want to make sure your big guys are on their big guys, and that's what you got to that's what you got to make sure you scheme against. Coach, how has uh, Van Darius looked since you know you've mm -hmm. been coaching him, and how big is it for the coach this Yeah, I think our I think our expectations have to be reasonable for him. Uh, he hadn't played in a football game in well over two years, um, and when he was out Alabama, he played some special teams, played a little bit of defense there. I think toward the end of his career there, but not a whole lot. So, um, in a lot of ways, it's going to be his first college football game. Um, he'll play some on defense. He'll play some on special teams. Um, We've kind of, over the last two to three weeks, we've kind of started getting him reps with the first group. He got a ton of reps uh, last week during our bye week. Uh, so he's going to be ready to play. He's excited about playing. Um, but I think we our expectations have to be reasonable. Ours as coaches are. Um, and But he, he's done a good job. Proud of him to this point. Um, look forward to watching him, see how he does in game-type game, game type settings. You've mentioned a couple of times about having to play catch up in the recruiting game. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you are now, and are you to the point where you and your staff feel comfortable, you know, selling things specific yeah. to? You talking about in the twenty class? Well, twenty and twenty one, yeah. just the whole. I think twenty one will be our first uh, real recruiting class. You know, I mean, I'm talking about from a time perspective where we're not playing catch up. Um, because recruiting now is two plus years, and I think the twenty one class will be the first class that. Um, that we've gone through the whole time with, okay? Um, I like the way our 20 class is coming together. Uh, I think we'll have, you know, we'll have, we'll make some movement here in the next couple of weeks. 
Um, I think that the guys we, we have committed, I like them. I think they're proving that they're playing at a high level right now. So I like those guys. We gotta we gotta finish strong. I think we I think we're setting ourselves up for a strong finish in December into February. Um, and I'm excited. We got a ton of twenty one kids coming to this game and so it's another reason why I think the the, the atmosphere needs to be at a, at a great level on Saturday because we're going to have some of our, not only our 20 guys, but our 21 guys here. So hopefully a lot of future Mountaineers in the house. Neil, you know, got any thoughts on the California law about players? No, nah, I was waiting. I was, I was surprised it took this long. So here's what I'll do. I'll just, I, I can sit up here and give you a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Bottom line is I really don't have an opinion on it. Um, and y'all heard, y'all asked me a little, like a bunch of questions like this. And my, and my deal is the same. Like, I just want to know the rules. Tell me the rules, we'll abide by them. But, like, I'm not into, like, making legislation. That's boring. I get it. Um, but, honestly, I've been trying to figure out how we're going to get some first downs. So, I like, I hadn't really thought about um, what what the California legislature's done. I know y'all have had some interesting takes on Twitter. I saw that. All right. Andy Staples has been talking about it nonstop. I had to just, like, hit my Twitter button. And Since you started talking, Pennsylvania is apparently – going to introduce something. Are they? I'm sure we live in a copycat society. I'm sure that it'll take. But I really, I, I really don't have any thoughts on it. I'm not educated enough on the bill to even to be able to talk about it. After how last year's game went down and the juice that those guys have to bring here, you get the, the holdover guys I'm talking about, are you sensing anything? I mean, you, you never have to get guys up for Texas, mm -hmm. but the holdover from last year's team, do you sense anything special from those guys prepping yeah. for this game? Well, I think that I think coming off a of bye week, anytime you're going to play, you haven't played in a couple of weeks, I think there's going to be excitement. I think we'll have great energy at practice today. I don't think we'll have any problem trying to motivate them to get them ready to play. Um, we had a lot of guys that played in that game, not a lot of guys that necessarily played vital roles in that game. Um, so um, for most of our guys outside a few defensive guys and Colton, this is going to be their first real action versus Texas. So um, honestly, we're, we're, we're not making a – once you get into Big 12, I'll treat these. I'll treat them all the same. This is a big one because this is the one we play this week. Uh, they happen to be ranked number eleven in the country. Uh, West Virginia had a big win against them last year, um, but I don't think that'll have any bearing whatsoever uh, when we line up and kick this thing off on Saturday. For, for whatever reason, fans have really latched on to this matchup. Have you gotten that sense just since you've come here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think um, you know the reasoning. I haven't played in the game. You know, I've played Texas before, but I haven't been here and played Texas. So, um, I do get the feeling on that. I'm not sure why. You know what I mean? Like, I just hadn't been here. So, I don't I – don't, and I'm not trying to evade anything. I just haven't played in the game. But I do feel like this is this is one that, that our fans, you know, are excited about. And it's one they talk about in the off season as well. Curious about them schematically. Mm -hmm. um, their B linebacker, I guess number 46, does that tip off – what they're going to be, whether a three or four man front, is that what you look for there? No, nah, they're really what they're doing is they're getting their rover. Okay. So there are a few teams across the country they're doing. It's kind of um, Clemson's doing it right now. Um, Iowa State's been doing it. Uh, they're doing it. Texas is doing it. They've got a rover that um, 19 and 25 both play it. Both really good players. Um, it's kind of a, a hybrid position. They they can play nickel. They can play safety. They can rush off the edge. Um, and they put them in a lot of different sp spots for them to make plays. And so that's kind of how, you know, when they get to their four down, that's kind of – they use that guy a lot. Um, but both those guys are, are really good players, and, and they make them go in a lot of different ways. Okay. You, saw, you saw a film on Hakeem Valley before you got here. Mm -hmm. How different is he now, and, and what kind of strides has he made? Well, <coughs> excuse me, I think he's playing with a lot more confidence. I think he's faster than he was a year ago. Um, he, uh, he, he, he and Keith both, they didn't play their best against Kansas, okay? They didn't play their best at all. But before the Kansas, Kansas game, they were, all, they were both playing at an extremely high level. Um, they didn't prepare as well during the Kansas week. I think it showed in the game. Uh, I fully expect them to bounce back. Um, but Akeem is, is one of our most improved players. I said this about Kelby Wickline the other day, and, and I think people sometimes forget, you know, sometimes, you know, Going into your senior year, you got a big, you get a big jump, you know, and and those are two kids that really have made big jumps. Um, and I like the way that that he's approached. 
special teams. I like the way he's approached defense. I think he's been a good mentor, a good leader on that side of the ball. He's really kind of taken some of those young guys in secondary under his wing. Um, so, so I'm pleased where he's where he's at right now. You haven't had a lot of depth at your corner. Trayshawn Miller, where is he physically? Yeah, he's still out. Yeah, he, he he's recovering from surgery. Um, you know, we hope to have him at, available at some point this year. He'll he'll be a red shirt um, unless something drastically changes. But we hope to have him where he's available for for maybe those four games later in the year. You know, you've um, kind of recycled your receiver core a couple times with I guess in the off season and then. Mm-hmm during the season, and you just mentioned Esdale coming along. How much has that changed? And has, I don't know, has that hindered Austin at all, or has it helped maybe some of the other receivers you're trying yeah. to inspire a little bit? So what we did, Mike, during like uh, two-a-days is basically we two-spotted, and we rotated those receivers uh, with the quarterbacks. All right, so Austin got a ton of work throwing to really all those guys in the two-deep. And, and Ali and Winston, okay, both rotated in there, so he got a bunch of work not only on the summer on his own, but also during fall camp. So he's got a pretty good um, relationship as far as throwing the ball to all those guys. Um, the, receiver, the receiver deal outside of, outside of Sam and really T.J. Simmons, everybody else, you know, they've kind of – they've had some up, excuse me, had some ups and downs. We need to be more consistent. I didn't think we played very well at all at the receiver position. That's all of them. Um, in the Kansas game. And that's really why we had to go kind of to more ball control and kind of just grind it out that win in the second half just because we didn't play great. And uh, so for us to win, you know, this week and really moving forward against the schedule is our receivers got to play at a high level and they got to be able to block on the perimeter, but they also got to be able to make plays and win in those one-on-one situations. Um, And really a lot of who plays in the game is going to be who has the best Tuesday and Wednesday. That's probably the way it's going to be moving forward. Yeah, you try to – limit the personal foul penalties as much mm-hmm. as possible. Obviously, we got two against Texas last year with the whole horns out situation. Have yeah. you addressed your players? Are we still talking about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. Um, now, nah, we'll, we'll address it at some point. I got to get from Greg Burks. I know he gave a monologue about it um, at uh, Media Days. I got to go back and, and call and ask him exactly what the penalty is. I said this on the conference call, I really, like, to me, it's like much to do about nothing. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather I'd rather uh, build up West Virginia than, than try to tear anybody else down. But I really hadn't thought about it. I'll deal with it probably later in the week.